Okay, doing this 11.2 quick check, uh, let's kind of just review what our different laws are. <clears throat> now, we're not really actually going to ask you to say whose law is whose when we get to a test, but, you know, we have notes on this. Okay, so Boyle's Law, that's pressure and volume, and that means that the number of moles and the temperature remains constant all the time. Thinking about those, okay, if we increase the pressure on a sample of gas, the volume goes down, so this is an inverse relationship. Okay, inverse relationship looks like this. PV is a constant, so we say P1V1 equals P2V2. And the graph for that would be a graph that looks like that kind of a curvy sort of a graph. Okay, second one here, Charles' Law. Okay, Charles' Law is volume and temperature. And if we increase the temperature, like on a balloon, then the volume goes, uh, ooh, wrong. Okay, the volume goes up. You know, if I heat up a balloon, it's going to get larger and larger. The number of moles in the pressure stays constant. Since they both go up together and both go down together, that's a direct relationship. And so it's going to be directly proportional, which means the law is going to look like a proportion. So V1 is to T1 as V2 is to T2. Okay, what's that going to look like when you do a graph? We're going to both go in the down and up together. It's going to get larger and larger as you go along. Okay, Gay-Lussac Law. And this is what we saw in that little video, uh, the black and white video, where the guy had pressure and he had temperature. And what he noticed is that as the temperature went down and down and down and down, the pressure dropped and dropped and dropped. So again, that's a direct relationship. The volume does not uh, change. It was in a glass container that cannot change its volume, and hopefully it didn't leak. So this, again, was a direct proportion. The graph would look like this. Okay, and the law, again, would be a proportion, so P1 is to T1 as P2 is to T2. And, again, these temperatures have to be in Kelvin. Okay, combined gas law, that is one that is going to uh, have the pressure and the volume and the temperature. The number of moles does not change, and the law for that is going to be P1V1 over T1. Notice T is always on the bottom, P2V2 over T2. And officially, that's really the only law you have to know because the others are just special cases of this law. Okay, it does not make sense to talk about a graph of this. Okay, let's go back and try a problem. So we have the gas law problems. Okay, show an expandable container. Okay, now it turned out this is actually wrong. Okay, this should be a rigid container. We don't want the, we don't want the volume to change. Okay, a rigid container uh, with CO2 gas has a pressure of 0.8 atmospheres. That's a pressure. Uh, eight, eight, yeah, and 40 degrees, which we're going to change to Kelvin, so that's going to be uh, plus 273, 313 Kelvin. What is the pressure? There's a new pressure at 100 degrees, and 100 degrees is going to be 373 Kelvin. So we have two pressures and a volume. No, two pressures and a temperature. So this must be P1, T1, and P2, T2. So let's put in our numbers. Okay, our first pressure we said is 0 0.8 atmospheres, and that was linked up with 313 Kelvin, 40 degrees. So what is the new pressure at 373 Kelvin? So we can try this out. So uh, it's going to be a proportion. So the, the law is P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And when we substitute in, we have 0.8 is to 313, as x is to 373. Okay, and we're going to cross multiply, and I'm going to get my uh, calculator out and get the answer. Okay, for this, I get an answer of uh, 0.95. Okay, it's really 0.95335. Uh, but since this only has two significant figures, I'm just going to give my answer to two significant figures. So 0 0.95 atmospheres, and that's the first one. Okay, let's try another one. A sample of nitrogen gas occupies 400 milliliters. Okay, that's a volume. At negative 20, okay, negative 20, add 273, we're going to have 253 Kelvin. So again, we want to do that before we forget. 500 torr, that's a pressure. What is the pressure if the sample is placed in a 1.2 liter container at 20 degrees? Let's change that to 293 Kelvin. So that's a volume. And what is the pressure? So we have all three variables. We have P1, V1, 
T1, and we have P2, V2, and T2. So let's go ahead and figure out all these numbers. So pressure one, we said was 500 torr. And the volume one is 400 milliliters. And the new pressure, the temperature is 253 Kelvin. Okay, so what is the pressure? So this is X, new volume 1.2 liters, and a new temperature 293 Kelvin. Now, because this is Tor, this answer is going to come out to be Tor, and that's fine. But my little problem we have here is this is in milliliters and this is in liters. So we're going to have to have them both in liters or both in milliliters, and we can change either one. I'm just going to go ahead and change this to 1,200 milliliters, and we'll go with that. Okay, as long as they match. So we're talking the equation P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2, and I'm going to substitute in, so 500 torr times 400 milliliters over 253 Kelvin is equal to X times 1200 milliliters divided by 293 Kelvin. Okay, I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to say 400 times, 500 times 400 times 293 is equal to 253 times X times 1,200. And when I get done, X is going to be 193 torr, 193.0. And that's what I get from my answer after I do the algebra of that. I hope that's right. Okay, next one. A syringe containing 50 milliliters of air, so that is a volume and has a pressure of uh, 125 kilopascals. At what volume will the syringe have a pressure of 200 kp? Okay, so I have pressure and volume and pressure and volume. So I already know that my equation is going to be P1V1 equals P2V2. And I need to get my variables. So P1, V1, P2, V2. My pressure, first pressure was 25 kpas. My first volume is 50 milliliters. What's the new volume? Okay, that's X. And the new pressure is 200 kPa's. My pressure units are not important as long as they match. And my uh, uh, volume units are not important as long as they match. So they're both going to come out in milliliters. So let's just substitute. And we have 25 kPa's times 50 milliliters is equal to 200 kPa's times X. So I'm going to solve for X, divide both sides by 200 kilopascals. So this cancels out. So X is equal to 25 times 50 divided by 200. And I get the answer here of 6.25 and that's going to be in milliliters. So I started off with 50 milliliters, goes down to 625, and that makes sense because my pressure is increasing a lot, so my, my volume ought to decrease a lot. Okay, last question. We have a 5 um, liter metal container, that's a volume, uh, has a pressure of 3 atmospheres at 100 degrees, which we're going to change that to 373 Kelvin. At what temperature, so we have a new temperature, will the pressure be one atmosphere? Okay, pressure, okay, uh, so it'd be in this a P. So I have a V, but it's a metal container, so a metal container is not going to change, so we don't need that volume. It's just going to be pressure and temperature and pressure and temperature. So the law we know is P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So let's organize our variables, P1, T1, P2, V2, no, T2, excuse me. Pressure is three atmospheres. And uh, what's the new pressure? That's X. Okay, temperature we said was uh, 100. Oh, I'm sorry, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. Okay, 
the pressure is one atmosphere, the new pressure. Okay, the first temperature is 373 Kelvin, so what is the new temperature? And the answer is going to come out in Kelvin. Okay, let's substitute in. So it's three atmospheres over 373 Kelvin is equal to one atmosphere over X. Now, sometimes when X is on the bottom here in a problem, kids have problems, you know, people have problems uh, uh, solving that, but just be careful. And I get an answer here of 124.3 uh, Kelvin, and I would just leave my answer in Kelvin, and people are getting out of class, I'm stopping. Bye-bye.